Hey, this is Tim's World, and I thought I would put on my YouTube channel what happened to me about 20 years ago when I became fully disabled. This is my testimony of what happened to me and what's happened to me in the last 20, 24 years of my life. Appreciate you listening to me. Apple Watch, it shows, it shows how well I slept last night, it's set to measure my sleep between like 7.30 and 4 o'clock, so here, another hour, it'll tell me how I slept, but, um, I was up so many times. I broke my coffee cup, Georgia coffee cup, the handle off. My brother Tracy gave me this Georgia coffee cup five, six years ago, and I broke the handle off. My back went out on me, and I fell. I got this agency supposed to help me find a job. I don't quite trust me. I don't trust myself, my physical problems. I don't trust. And I don't trust the job either. I just don't trust either or of having a job where I'm all totally off disability because of what all I've been through in my life. I just don't have, I don't have no trust in it. You can work and draw disability at the same time about 20 years ago. When I got my disability, heck far you can see in my eyes, I'm tired. You see the little bags here? But when I got my disability 20 years ago, I, I was working. How, all this, how did this all start? Well, I've had neck problems ever since I was a kid. But about 20, about in the early 2000s, my back started acting up on me. I had a job working AutoZone. And then 
I was also working full time. I was working full time at Lincoln Mercury, and then I was working at AutoZone. And I don't know. I always have something on my lip when I'm doing a video. That's because I was eating some. And I had, I had actually had two jobs and a half, really. I mean, I was working full time at Lincoln Mercury, and I was working part time at AutoZone, and then I was mowing my neighbor's yard for. Her. I lived in a mobile home trailer park. And life was pretty good. Uh, that pizza job, uh, only, wait, I, I wasn't doing the pizza job yet. I was working Lincoln, Mercury, and AutoZone. And I worked AutoZone a couple years before they decided to move me full time. But in order for me to work full time at AutoZone, I had to quit my Lincoln Mercury job. Work at Lincoln Bristy Wallace Lincoln Mercury over there on the west side of Morristown. So I quit that job. Was working full time at uh, AutoZone, and then my father died. When my father passed away, right before he passed away, he found out he had cancer. And I'd worked at AutoZone three years, never, ever, ever missed a day. I was one of the few there that would come in on my day off if asked. So I could literally say the time that I was there in three years at AutoZone, full time I'm talking, the full time part I was three years, I gave them 110% effort because Number one, I was 100% always there. And number two, if they called me on my day off, I'd come in and work. All them other full-timers, their day off was their day off. I remember that like yesterday. I remember talking to them about it. Oh, God, my back's hard to sit up. I remember talking with them about it. Uh, I remember them talking with me about it. There's like... You come in on your day off, huh? I said, yeah, if they call me and need me, I come in. And I remember one of those full-timers, the other full-timers was in a break room. They were all saying, Tim, when we have a day off, we have a day off. They don't, they call us in, we don't come in on our day off. <laughs> I'm like, our day off is for us. I remember them talking to me about that. And I'm like, well, I don't care to come in. I like working here. I enjoy it. And I did. I enjoyed that job at AutoZone. So as time went along, I've always wanted, back in the day before, when I was a kid, Dad was living, I was, there was a time before I worked at AutoZone, worked at Lincoln Mercury, I even worked at Chrysler, I worked at Free Service Tire, I worked at Sears. Before I was doing mechanic work, there was a time... Um, I wanted to deliver pizza. I want to be a pizza driver because I've always enjoyed driving. My dad was alive then. I was actually still living at home. My dad jumped my ass. But uh, he didn't want me delivering pizza at all. Too much wear and tear on your car. I don't know. He just didn't want me. I don't know why my dad just did not want me doing pizza deliveries. But he owned a travel agency. I worked with him too. And he had an idea that I start my own local Morristown mailing service. That's what he was wanting to do, a local Morristown mailing service. And um, I don't know, I never did get that together. He knew all the businesses in town. My dad owned a travel agency. He did airline tickets and trips and everything for all the big like Burke Line, Shelby Williams, uh, Anchor Brush, Toyota, um, all uh, Jeffrey Chain, everybody did airline tickets through my dad's company, East Tennessee Travel. He had the connections. He, he knew the people that would um, use me to do a mailing, a local mailing service. But we never did, it never did happen. So he wanted me to do that, but yeah, he didn't want me to drive liver pizza. I don't know. I don't understand that. You know, that's just what the deal was. But uh, anyway, so so I didn't do it because Dad got so mad at me over the idea of doing it. But after he died, like I said, 
I went from working full time Lincoln Mercury part time at the same time full time I was work, working full time Lincoln Mercury part time AutoZone. AutoZone wanted me to work for them full time, so I went and worked for them full time. And then when I went to work for AutoZone full time, my dad was dying in the hospital, cancer, and that's the only time I I was missing days because I was spending too much time in the hospital with my dad. I was spending a night with my my dad was dying with cancer. And I was spending the night with him in the hospital. All of a sudden, I started missing days. And I've, I've worked there this time three years. Gave them 110% effort. And then after my dad passed away, so many months went by, I went right back to my old self, old Timbo, 110% Timbo. There every day at work. They called me in my day off. I come in. I went right back to my usual self. And then I will never, ever forget this day as long as I live. It was busy one morning. I was working. And I was over here to my left. We was answering phones and, and people were standing in line. AutoZone. I was working full time there. Steve, my boss, Steve Ray, my boss, had a phone call from the corporate office. I didn't know it at the meeting. I didn't know it in that moment. I just remember him getting off the phone. Him looking over at me. He says, Tim, you got to go home. And I was like, Steve, it's busy. What do you mean got to go home? He says, I just got a call from corporate office. You, they're telling me send you home. The district manager will be in the morning to explain. I said, well, I'll go home, but why don't you work me until it's not busy? I made a suggestion. Why don't you work me here until it calms down? Then I'll go home. He says, no, they said now. He looked at me. He goes, what did you do? I'm like, I have no idea what I done. What did I do? He says, I don't know, but they're sending you home. And the next day, the district manager came in. Told me they were sending me home because I missed too many days. While my dad was dying with cancer. That's what that was all about. I said, I missed too many days. And, and I said... My dad was dying with cancer. What the heck are you talking about? I had to, I was spending. That's the only reason why I was missing. My dad was dying with cancer. I was. He said I don't. And I went right back to my usual self, not missing any days. I don't know. So that's why they fired me, missing too many days. I took him to court. To what do you call that court? I don't know the exact name of that court. But I took him to labor court or whatever to get my unemployment. And in Tennessee. In Tennessee, if you get fired from a job, and if the judge says it's the company's fault you were working with, you were fired, then they have to pay you unemployment. If it's not the company's fault, it's your fault you were fired, then, um, then, uh, then they have to pay you. Like, if it's my fault I got fired, then I don't get no unemployment. If it's the company's fault they were fired, then... That's how they do unemployment then. I guess they still do it like that now. So, I didn't think I would win. I just did it out of despite. I just wanted to mess up their day in court. That's all I was doing this for. I thought, I'm going to sit in the labor court. My dad died. I had, my dad, when he died, I had about $60,000 of life insurance policies. That's all. That's how I bought my mobile home. And at the time, I still had a little, I had money in the bank. I bought a mobile home. Back then, I remember my rent in that trailer park, rent in that trailer park. This was like 2000, 2001. My rent was only $155. And I had a friend of mine living with me, splitting the bills. My bills were like $200 a month. Boy, that was nice, wasn't it? Can you imagine all your bills, electric bill, phone bill, rent bill, everything? totaling up to two hundred dollars that's what it was back then because because it was already so cheap living in that mobile home trailer park with a mobile home paid for mobile home paid for it was so cheap plus i had a buddy of mine i had two bed we had two bedrooms i had two bedrooms in that place didn't really need a job i didn't really need a job at the time i even had money in the bank and so i took him to labor court anyway and what happened was, I got a letter in the mail from work that, that they sent me a, a letter in the mail from work. And on the letter, 
everybody that I worked with at AutoZone had wrote on the letter, Tim, we miss you. We pr you just compliment me on a letter. I had a letter sent to me in the mail from people that I worked. They were saddened that I was gone over this. And they had wrote, everybody that I worked with at AutoZone wrote on there that letter about how much they enjoyed working with me. They're going to miss working with me. And so when I showed up to labor court, the AutoZone officials didn't even show up. None of them showed up. I was there by myself. And I told the judge what happened, and I showed the judge the letter that everybody had wrote on a piece of paper, all the positive comments about how it was a joy to work with me and everything. And I just told the judge, I, they fired me because I missed too many days when my dad was dying with cancer. And I had a more than perfect, I had a more than perfect here, hear that furnace coming on. My electric bill is going to be ninety million dollars. Every time I come, I freeze easy. But anyway, so I told the judge exactly what happened. They fired me because I missed too many days because Dad was dying with cancer. And I told the judge, I says, if you look at my work history there, before and after, plus what everybody says here about me on this letter, I was excellent to work with. I was there a hundred and ten percent. I was there every day they asked me. And even on my day off, I'd come in. So that's 110%, isn't it? The only reason why I missed was for a couple of months. It was a couple of months, two months. My dad was dying with cancer. I told the judge that, and the judge said, the judge said, they shouldn't have fired you. They should have given you a leave of absence. I'm going to rule in your favor. So they had to pay me unemployment for like, I forgot how many weeks it is, but it was like six months they had to pay me. I won it. I freaking digging won it. I couldn't believe I won it. I was like, they, the AutoZone officials didn't even show up. They were like, where are the AutoZone officials that's supposed to be against me? They didn't even show up. Nobody showed up. All I had from AutoZone was a positive affirmation letter from me. And I told him the truth, exactly what happened. The judge ruled in my favor, and I got a six months, I got a six month holiday pay. <laughs> That's why I looked at it, and I already had money in the bank from my dad, from where he died. He left me like sixty thousand dollars. I spent about half of it on a car and mobile home. I still had like thirty thousand dollars in the bank at the time, back in early two thousand. This was before I was disabled, and I had a roommate living with me and a mobile home, so I had it made. I had it friggin' made, did I? I don't know. There's this guy named Ralph Lamb from Marstown at the time. He was the manager. He knew me at uh, Advance Auto. And he asked me to come work for him. And I could have just stuck on that holiday pay if I wanted to. But I wanted to go work. Could have stayed on that holiday pay if I wanted to. I could have said, Ralph, you, I'll work with you, but give me, till, give me another few months here. I'm enjoying this holiday pay. AutoZone's having to pay me for firing me for the wrong reason. But I didn't. I just went ahead and went to work and that ended my disability. I guess I should have wore that. I don't know. That's just what I did. I just wanted to go. I enjoyed doing auto parts. So then, here I am working full time Advance Auto. I wanted to do pizza deliveries too. So, um, I first went to work at Papa John's, and then one day I was at work, there were people there smoking weed on, on the clock at Papa John's, and I walked off that job because I don't, I don't work around people smoking weed, drugs. I worked at Papa John's there for a little while, it's, I'm trying to, this is a long story, it's going to be a long video, isn't it? I was working at Papa John's and I was working at Vance Auto and I come in one night and I was trying to talk to the boss man about something and he slammed the door, he slammed the office door in my face like he was mad at me about something. And then some girl comes up to me and whispers in my ear, Tim don't talk to him right now, he's pissed off because he caught a bunch of drivers in the back smoking weed and he had to send them home. I said, oh. I figured they were getting fired. 
I figured they were, he wasn't really mad at me. He was mad at those people, whoever those drivers were, I don't know who they were, smoking weed in the back parking lot and drive, then doing pizza deliveries. He had to send them home. That's why he was mad, not at me, but at those people. I just caught him at the wrong moment. I didn't know that was going on. He slammed the door in my face. This girl comes up and whispers in my ear what's really going on. I didn't know that. So the next morning, I come in to work at that job thinking I had to be there at 6. I got there at 3. Remember me? I I like to work. I, got, I was getting there three hours early because I figured I figured he fired them. I figured the driver's not working there no more. I figured, I remember that morning waking up thinking, I'm supposed to be there at 6, but I know he's going to need me. I mean, he fired those people that were smoking weed. I know he did. I guess I'll show up three hours early and see if he needs me. I know he's going to need me. I show up early to work and say, hey, I'm here to work. He says, you're not supposed to come in until 6 o'clock. I say, well, I figured you're going to need some help after what happened last night. He says, no, I don't need no extra help. I said, what do you mean? He says, oh, I fired him. And no, he said, I didn't fire him. I just sent him on for the day. I said, I'm not going to work for a place that condones drugs. The sheriff's office is in and out of here buying pizza, and then you're going to let some fools do the... Del- I'm not going to be in the middle of delivery pizza driver smoking weed and then the sheriff's department comes in buying pizza. I'm not going to be in the middle of that. I'm gone, man. I, I don't work for a place that condones drugs. You're condoning their drug use by letting them work here. They were busted smoking weed, dope, on the job. They should have sent their ass home. Or you should have fired them. So I quit because of that. And then I went to work next at Pizza Inn. By the way, still working two jobs. Then I went to work at Pizza Inn Told they hired me. And when I was working at Pizza Inn, that job was going well until one day my hands broke out so bad with psoriasis. They were bleeding all over the place. And this is a restaurant. This is Pizza Inn. I'm doing deliveries. And I come in with latex gloves on because I didn't want to get blood all over the place. Karen, I think that was her. I can't remember her last name. I just remember her first name was Karen. Asked me why I was wearing, my boss, Karen, asked me why I was wearing gloves. I told her, I said, my hands are broke out really bad with psoriasis. It happens this time of the year. It was in the wintertime. And I'm just, I got psoriasis medicine on my hands. And I'm just keeping them concealed because they're bleeding a little bit. She's like, I've got to look at that. So she, I took my gloves off and showed her my hands. And she sent me home because she's like, I can't have somebody working in a restaurant with bleeding hands like that. I, that's a violation. They, they'll shut me down. The health department shut me down. Somebody working there with bleeding hands like that. So that's why I lost that job. And then I went to work at Domino's. By the way, still working the whole time with Ralph Lamb at Advance Auto. I went to work. I just wanted to deliver pizza and do auto parts. Those are the two things I wanted to do. So then I went to work at Domino's. Bobby was my manager's name there. Why am I all of a sudden I remember these names? This guy named Bobby was the man. Bobby was somebody. Um, so then I went to work at Domino's delivering pizza and working at Advance Auto. Through all these pizza jobs, I was working Advance Auto. I was working Advance Auto, Papa John's, and I was working Advance Auto, Pizza Inn. And then now I'm working Advance Auto and um, Domino's. And I worked there for about nine months. I did that for about nine months. And then all of a sudden, I didn't think the boss man liked me. All of a sudden, I get a call. I, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't a call. I go into work one day, and my boss man... My boss man gives me a job offer to go there full time if I quit work in advance auto. He's, I, remember, I still remember this like yesterday. He shocked me. I didn't think he liked me too well. I didn't think he and I got along. I just I always had this impression he don't like me. I always had that impression he didn't like me. And then all of a sudden I'm standing there. He's wanting me to go from part time to full time. He likes me evidently. 
I was totally blown away by that. And he said, I want you to work full time with me, Tim. You're the most diligent, hard worker. You do an excellent job. You're, you, you need to be with me full time. I want you full time, but only on one condition, full time. I said, what's that? He says, you got to quit your job with Advance Auto because as much work I'm going to give you, I don't see you doing both. And I'm not working you around their schedule no more. you got to work my schedule, my schedule only. you got to quit that job. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to. I wanted to do both jobs, but I thought about it a day or two. I was making way more money pizza delivery driving than I was Advance Auto, and I was. I enjoyed both. I enjoyed it. So I just went where my heart was at. I just gotta go where my heart's at. I enjoyed. I got actually. I didn't say that exactly. Right. I go. I gotta go where the money's at. That's what I said because I was making way more money with 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 Domino's. I was making. I was making way more money with Domino's. I was, and that's why I quit the Vance Auto job to go there full time because I just wanted to make as much money as I could between the two jobs, between doing both jobs and doing um, Domino's. Full time, I'm like, I make a whole lot more money Domino's full time, both jobs. So that's what I did for about six months full time. And then all of a sudden, I start having this sleeping problem. And that's when my hormone problem started kicking in. And that's when this early bird syndrome problem, that's when my sleeping problem started kicking in. I went to a doctor about it, and they did all these labs on me, and then they found out about my thyroid problem, hormone problems, and then ever since then, I've been sick, so... Okay, I'm back from the sound you hear in the background. You know what I had to do. I had to get up and go to the bathroom. But I'm giving the story here of what happened to me when I had to do disability. Another thing, too, one of the reasons why I quit, well, one of the reasons why I quit working at Lincoln Mercury early on, I was having back problems, neck problems. That was one of the, one of the reasons why I quit doing Lincoln Mercury and went to AutoZone full time. It was easier for me physically. But anyway, so I forgot where I left off. So I may, I may be backing up a little too far. But but let me tell you. Um, so here I am. I was working at Advance Auto and Domino's. I was doing Advance Auto. Actually, I was doing. Both, actually, let me tell you this. I forgot to mention this. I was doing both jobs part-time. I was working part-time at Domino's and part-time at Advance Auto. But the amount of hours I was getting between them both was a little more than a part-time job. And let me back up a little bit. So my boss came to me one day. His name was Bobby. I just remember his first name. Totally surprised me. Said he wanted to wire, hook me up full-time there. But I had to quit the Advance Auto job. And I thought about it a few days. And I had to go where the money's at. The money was delivering pizza. Make way double the amount of money. I mean, making double the amount of money. So, that's what I've done. I thought that would be the right thing to do. Is just go work full-time at Auto. Let's go work full-time at not Auto. Let's go work full-time at Domino's. Cause that's where I'm making the money. Let's go where the money's at. Let's go with the money. So I'm working there about nine months and I come in one night 
from work. I, I was working mostly what I was working there then. I'd go in most of the time around um, five or six o'clock. Sometimes I'd work in the daytime, but most of that job was coming in afternoon and working until midnight. I used to be able to do that, believe it or not. I used to be able to do that. I did that for like nine months and I come home one night and I was up all night long. No sleep. I, I, I'll never forget that night. I come in one night like I normally do at about one o'clock and went to bed about two and I'd get up around ten. That's about twenty some years ago. And I was up all night long. I thought, heck, I got work today. I got work tonight. I've been up all night long. What am I going to do? So I went into work totally sleep deprived. And at this time, I've been working there almost a year. He put me on full time. I had never had a sick day. I don't like asking. I don't like doing sick days. I'm a, When it comes to working the job, I'm there 100%. That's just me. My One of my first jobs I ever had at Kmart back in the early 1990s. I worked there 13 months, never missed a day, and got an award for it. One time when I was working that job at Kmart, that was my first real job I had. I was working through my lunch breaks. The, the office manager called me into the office one day and said, Tim, you can't work through your lunch break. No, I'm sorry. She said, Tim, you got to clock out on your lunch breaks. We don't pay you to work through your lunch breaks. And I told her, I didn't do, I don't do lunch breaks. I, I told her I didn't do lunch breaks. I, I, I stay working till I'm done. And she says, oh no, you can't do that here. We got labor laws to go by. You'll get me in trouble. If you work so many hours here, you have to take a 30 minute break. And if you work so many hours here, you have to take an hour break. You have to do that by law. You're going to get me in trouble. I said, oh, I didn't know that. So that's the way I that's the way I've always been when it comes to a job. I'm a hundred and ten percent person. So I come in one night to go to work. Domino's, they hired me full time, damn it. This made me so mad. This was so this was so frustrating. One of the saddest times of my life ever. I go into work. I tell Bobby for the first time I can't deliver pizza tonight. He's like, what's wrong? Why can't you do deliveries? I come into work. I told him I can't do it. He said, why? I said, I've been up all night long, man. I, I've not slept a wink. And I'm totally sleep deprived. I can't be driving all over town delivering pizza sleep deprived, can I? Would you want me to do that? He knows I'm not a party man. He said this as a joke. He goes, well, what'd you do when you got home? Party all night? And I said, no, I was in the bed trying to sleep. My brain wasn't shut off. It's the first time the sleeping problem started. It started when I had a job in the afternoon working till midnight or one o'clock. And then I go home and all of a sudden I'm up all night long. It's when the problem started, when I was a... When I was a go-to-bed late, get up late person, that's when the sleeping problem started. He said, well, what do you want to do? Bossman asked me, what do you want to do? You want to take a sick day? You've been here almost a year. You've never had a sick day. Everybody's entitled for a sick day. And I said, I don't know what I want to do. I'm mad. I'm frustrated. I don't want to take a sick day, but I can't deliver pizza either. I can't deliver pizza sleep deprived. I was just pacing the floor. I think I may have got there about an hour early and I probably shouldn't have drove there because I was totally sleep deprived. But I was wanting to work and I knew I couldn't work sleep deprived and I didn't know what to do. I just went in personally, talked to the boss about it and I was pissed at myself for not sleeping. And then I looked at him, I said, is it okay? I didn't feel physically like doing this. I didn't feel physically like doing this. This is when my back problem just started, but I could stand. Back problem wasn't as bad back then as it is at the moment. It's when my back problem started kicking in. Just started. Just started. And 
um, I was so wore out. I didn't. I felt like being in the bed, not at work, because I was so sleep deprived. But in my mind, I had to do something. I just had to do something. I'm pacing the floor there at that Papa John's on the east side of Knock Marstown, on the east side of Marstown. And I look at my boss and I say, is it okay if I just cut pizza, throw boxes for a few hours here? Because see, when we were a, de a delivery driver, if, if, if the deliveries weren't rolling, if it wasn't busy, we was always supposed to stay busy doing something, either folding up pizza boxes or cutting the pizza if it's, or stuff, uh, if it wasn't too busy. And I asked him, can I just stay here, work inside the store, that way I'm not in no jeopardy of running over somebody sleep deprived. And I'm just hanging here as long as I can. I'll fold boxes and cut pizza. He said, sure, if that's what you want to do. So here I am working, feel horrible. You know how you feel when you have no sleep? That's when my sleeping problem started. I had to quit that job. <laughs> I had to quit that job. I didn't want to quit. quit. I quit the job. I couldn't sleep right anymore. It's horrible. I quit the job. I quit the job, folks. Just I couldn't, I don't know what went wrong with my brain. My brain just went haywire. I couldn't, I couldn't sleep is what the problem was. I just couldn't, I just couldn't sleep. And I can't drive my car sleep deprived as much as I enjoyed that freaking job. I couldn't drive no more because I couldn't sleep right. <laughs> At the time, I had some money in the bank still. Bills were extremely low with a paid-off trailer, living in a trailer park. Rent was $155, and then I had a roommate with me splitting the bills. So I didn't have to work. I wasn't in too much stress at the time. But you know, that money was running out. That money, that money eventually ran out. And then my roommate eventually moved out. And this problem would not go away. I went to my primary care doctor about it first. It's a long story. I'm going to try to shorten it a little bit. But I eventually went to my doctors, found out I was having thyroid problems. And then, and uh, it, I didn't know it at the time. I didn't know what was going on at the time. But what I know now what was going on. I know now what was going on. Start having pituitary gland problems. I didn't know it. And that's what was making me have thyroid problems, testosterone problems, and that was screwing up my sleep. And then back problem too, and neck problem. And uh, I remember them doing labs on me and found out I had these thyroid problem. And it's kind of a long story here. Um, I'm trying to shorten this down because this video is getting long. Um, I remember one time going to my sleep, at, yeah, my sleep apnea doctor, Dr. Roseanne Barker. I was telling her, I said, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I can't sleep good in the mornings. I wake up early every morning. What's causing that? She didn't know this doctor. I don't think she knew. I don't think she knew I was having hormone problems or did she? I can't remember. I just remember when I was telling her that I have a problem waking up early in the morning. 
I, what's making me wake up so early? I had a job one time going that made me go to bed at 2 and get up at 10, and now I can't sleep in the mornings. What's wrong with me? Because she's a sleep apnea doctor. I figured she would know. And then she told me, she said, you may have a problem with your hormones because at in your 24-hour cycle of life, she told me this. It's the first time I ever heard this, so this ain't no hypochondriac. This ain't a, this is not a uh, psychosomatic situation in my brain going on because I didn't know this. I had the problem. I was, I had the problem before she described what it could be. You know what I'm saying? This, and she's probably what, she's right. This is what it was. I just told her what was going on and she goes, well, the pro the problem is this. This is what's probably going on with you. It makes sense. It makes sense. She says, at night time when you're sleeping, your body's building hormones. When you're in REM sleep, that's when your body builds hormones. And first thing when you wake up in the morning, that's when your hormones peak as far as the day goes, as far as the 24 hours of the day. And then in the daytime, they kind of trickle down a little bit. So that's why you wake up with so much anxiety. I get anxiety so bad in the mornings right now, I got goosebumps all over me. I wake up with it. I just feel nervous all over. And then it'll taper down. It's something to do with my hormones, she explained. It has to be. It makes sense. She says that every morning, I said about 99% of the time, it's always the first thing when I get up. Sometimes it's in the afternoons, but extremely rare. It's mostly, by far, a morning thing. She says it's something in your hormones. I remember after that going to, I was seeing one endocrinologist, and then I went to Dr. Langton, and she looked at my labs, and she ordered a MRI of my brain. This was a long time ago. It was 15, 20 years ago, something like that. She ordered an MRI of my brain because she expected something wrong with my pituitary gland. I, she didn't tell me that in the beginning. She just said, I just remember saying, I need to do an MRI of your brain, see what your brain looks like. I thought, I thought, I'm having thyroid problems. I wonder why she wants to look at my brain. She was thinking, well, this is what she told me. This is what she was thinking. When I showed up for the follow-up appointment on that day, she said, I got good news, I got bad news about your situation. My alarm clock's going off. I'm supposed to get up now. Uh... She goes, I got good news, I got bad news about your brain. I thought, well, she goes, first I want to tell you the good news, and then I want to tell you the bad news. That's just the way she gave it out to me. I said, okay, what is, she goes, well, the good news is you don't have a brain, you don't have a pituitary tumor. I thought, she goes, I thought by looking at your labs, you have a pituitary tumor, but it's not a pituitary tumor. I go, well, what is it? She goes, your pituitary gland's not shaped right. It's all swiveled up. Your, your pituitary gland's a master gland in your brain that regulates all your hormones, your thyroid, your testosterone. You've got a pituitary gland problem, and this will mess with your sleep, too. This is coming from my pituitary gland problem. That's what my anxiety problem is causing coming from that. That's why I'm waking up so early. I know it is. I know that's what the problem is. And then I got problems with my low back, my neck, my hips, and my feet. Feet, hips, low back, neck, pituitary gland problems. And then I got a ITP platelet disease. I got a platelet disease going on. The doctor Hannah says, it's just a matter of time your body's going to quit making platelets. I just got a lot of problems. And then I got heart issues going on. I got to take two heart pills. And then my stomach doesn't digest food very well. I just got a lot of health problems. I can't help. And I'm wanting to find a job. I'm wanting to go to work. And I don't, with the health problems I got going on right now, I don't trust myself. To be able to keep a job going. I just. I want to get a job. I want to try my best to keep a job going and everything. But I just don't trust myself. 
with my health problems, being able to keep a job. I think the best thing for me to figure out to do something at home, I don't like to be at home all the time. I like to be going, 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 going. That's the reason why I've done that Uber job for seven years. And by the way, when I got my disability 20 years ago, this I forgot to tell this story. I had a friend at uh, Vizzoli's. I couldn't work nowhere. I, was, I couldn't sleep right. I, I, I couldn't do anything. My body, I just had a massive anxiety, depression disorder. It just totally disabled me from work back then. And I got this guy at Manly Baptist Church. That's my friend. He's a manager at Fazoli's. We was in a small group together at Manly Baptist Church. And I was telling him, I was telling the group about my problems. And he said, well, why don't you come work with me? He goes, I'll work with you, however. So this guy, man, he, he was the manager at Fazoli's. He said, Tim, you just come in when you can and wipe down tables and ask customers if they're doing okay and I worked about 10 15 hours a week that's about all I could do and I got my disability then even though I was working those few hours and as always I got my disability then but the thing is about me in a job is I don't trust my physical self and I don't trust the job either I, I, I don't think it's a good idea for me to find a job to go totally off disability because I got too many health issues. I think it's $100,000 a year just to keep me alive. I'll go into a myxedema coma without my two thyroid pills. 200 micromilligrams of T4, 5 milligrams of T3. That's a pretty serious dose. Without it, that'll put you in a coma in about six weeks called a myxedema coma. And then I got this heart medicine I gotta take. And then I got a CPAP machine back there because my brain stem shuts my lungs down when I fall asleep 92 times an hour. That's no exaggeration, 92 times per hour. That's what they told me. And then my plantar fasciitis feet, bone cyst in my hips, my low back, my neck, if I'm not triple disabled, I don't know who is. The disability agency, they'll let you work and draw too at the same time. They, I know that. I know people, people do it all the time. That's what I want to do. I don't make enough money to pay all my bills. I don't know why my disability check is so tiny. It's like 90% of my disability check is rent, and it's about to be 100% of my disability check. Hundred, about to be a hundred percent when rent goes up next. About to be a hundred percent of my disability check, and I got a spreadsheet in my computer. I know what it costs to barely get by. I thought that seemed like a lot of money for me to barely get by, but I looked it up online. The poverty level of Tennessee. I'm under the budget that I have in my spreadsheet. What I spend on all my bills and every week. You're looking at somebody here's below the poverty line. Three hundred dollars a month below the poverty line. I am. I'm below the poverty line. So I know I ain't living high on the hog. If you go by what the state of Tennessee says the poverty line is, I'm below the poverty line. I don't get enough money to pay my bills. If my brother doesn't help me, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I guess rent won't get paid. I'll be homeless. So it's my long story here about what happened to me how I ended up on disability where I'm at now and I'm wanting to get this this agency wants to help me find a job but I don't trust the job and I don't trust me on a full time job at all I just, that's what I've been through in my life I just don't trust it's just too scary for me to be off disability if it wasn't for all my medical issues if I only had one medical problem or maybe two at the most. Wouldn't be that scary. But man, I've got a multitude of sleep apnea, pituitary hormone problem, neck, low back, hips, feet. Uh, also, diabetes is going on. Heart medicines I got to take. 
I got all this, I, I got about $100,000 worth of medical bills. I can't make it without, I'll be dead without all this. This, this Medicaid, Medicare stuff is keeping me alive. I'll, I'll be dead in four months. If I lose my medicines over there, you see my medicines right over there? I lose my doctors, I lose my medicines, I'm walking dead, man. It's just, I don't want to commit suicide. I want to live as long as I can live. But I lose, I can't see my doctor's suicide be a better be a better thing for me than going through a myxedema coma, which I probably wouldn't die by myxedema coma. A heart attack would probably get me before the coma. Because when I stop taking my thyroid medicine, that's what affects me first as my heart starts going out of rhythm and everything I'd probably die I mean if the heart attack didn't get me the coma would the myxedema coma would so anyway that's my story thanks for watching